Today, I'll show you how to set up WooCommerce product filters so you can finally sort items in your online store. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to add filters for price, brand color, and whatever else you want so that your customers can easily find that green Gucci dress in size medium. And for this, I will be using a free filter everything plugin, which lets you add pretty much any kind of product filtering option to your store, even if you have a zero budget. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing you'll need is to access your WordPress website. So let's do just that. So access your WordPress website, just like this beautiful clothing store of mine. Oh, actually to do that, head to your HTML dashboard, click on websites, and then go to your website's admin panel. Okay, once you're in the WordPress dashboard, the first thing you wanna do is install the filter plugin. So scroll down a bit and look for plugins on the left sidebar. Then pick add new plugin. Oh, and by the way, if you're uncertain what these plugins I'm rambling about are, they're basically tools that help your website work better or have new features without you needing to code or build anything yourself. They're like Legos, basically, which you snap together to give them new abilities or just make it look cooler. All right, now let's get back to it. In the plugin search bar, type in filter everything and you should see this plugin, filter everything product filter and WordPress filter. That's the one we need. Hit on install now and then on activate. Once the plugin is active, you will be given a new button on your WordPress dashboard called filters. As you can see, it has three different options, but just before jumping into creation, let's quickly check the settings to see if everything's all right here. Okay, now this part isn't much fun, but it is quite important. One thing I'd urge you to do is to disable this Ajax right here. Leave it disabled until you have added your filters and ensure they work correctly. Then we'll come back to it later. For now, the rest of the settings can stay untouched. Okay, now go to the filter sets section and click on add filter set at the top. This will create a new filter set and let's give it a name such as store filters. The next step is to select what you want to filter. Since we want to sort products, let's choose products right here. Once you hit that, hit the add filter button as well. Next, we can choose what kind of filter this is and what it will be called. Okay, first I'll start with the product category filter. So people in my store can choose between dresses, pants, jackets, and whatever else they want. So for the title, I'll put in categories. Remember that you don't need anything super creative here. The goal is to help people navigate through your store quickly and very easily. Okay, then you must pick what you want to apply the filter to. As you can see, this plugin allows you to sort different things from themes to custom fields and whatever else. And some of the options are available only for pro versions, but the free version provides you with all the essentials. Just trust me on this. So you don't really need to spend any money here. All right, so since I'm creating the category filter, I will choose product categories. Now moving on, var name for URL is a variable name for the filter. If you move on to the little question mark, you'll see a pretty clear example of how this name will look on the URL path. Basically, I'm gonna name this one cat. Customers will see this name on the URL path. All right, next, you can choose how you want your options to be displayed. You can choose between checkboxes, radio buttons, label lists, or dropdown. Choose whatever you want here. I'll go with the radio buttons this time. I just think they look pretty nice. And if you want to explore more options, then click on, yep, on the more options button at the top. From here, you can select the filter logic, or means that if you filter by red or blue, it will show products that are either red, blue, or both. And means that if you filter by red and blue, it will only show products that are both red and blue. Hope that didn't confuse you too much. Afterwards, you can choose the order in which you want to sort the options in the widget, such as by name or leave it as is. Here, you can also exclude or include terms, make the filter collapsible, and so on. Basically, it almost has everything one could need to filter their products in their online store. So just play around here. Okay, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see some additional settings like whether to hide empty terms or not, allow searching the field, and etc. For example, you can select to hide the options bar that have no products in them, and then they'll appear in active. So just pick what suits your store best, and it's, it's just up to you. Whatever you pick is good. 
Once you're happy with the settings, click on this arrow at the top to hide them and get more space because we're not done just yet. So what other filters can be beneficial here? Maybe the one that lets you select the price range you are comfortable with so you won't see all the expensive items you don't want to buy or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty convenient, right? So let's click on that. Click on add filter. And now in the filter by select custom field numeric. This now opens the option for the meta key. Just type price in the search bar and select underscore price or just type it in yourself with an underscore in front of the word. Then you can again add a URL variable name like price or just a letter P. And for the view, well, the only possible option is numeric range, so let's leave it as this. Once again, you can choose to explore more options or go with the default ones like I'm going to do right now. And let's hide the settings bar once again. Now, as you can see, it's not very difficult. This way you can keep adding more filters to your store like the most popular ones you see in most stores, which are color, brand, size, and etc. You know what I'm talking about. And again, just choose what works for your specific product. The only thing you should keep in mind is that each of your products should have attributes set to them so that filters work correctly. For example, if you're selling a red dress, you may assign the attribute red. If your products already have attributes set, you can hit skip right to this part of the video. But if you haven't set any attributes yet, I'll show you how to do it right now. So let's get back to our computers. Okay, to set the product attributes, you'll first need to go to the left sidebar and select products and then attributes. Over here, you should see a list of your product attributes. If you don't have any, go ahead and write them down on the left. Let's say I want to filter my products by brand. So I'm going to add brand as the attribute name and hit add attributes. As you can see, it appears on the right in the table. Then let's add color and size. All three attributes are now inside the table, but we do need to give them terms. In other words, we need to specify what brands, colors, and sizes I want. So click on configure terms. Now you can add specific brand names in your store one by one. So let's say I sell Gucci clothes. Let's type the name here and then hit on add new brand. And now this brand name is added to this attribute. It works exactly the same with colors. Let's just type in red right here and then just add it. So just add all your colors, brand names and sizes in the same way. Once you do it, go to the left sidebar and select all products. Here we'll place attributes for each product. Let's pick this dress and hit on edit and now scroll down a bit and select attributes on the left right here. Click on add existing and pick one of the attributes you just added. So for the brand, let's pretend this one is Gucci. I'll just put in the value section like this. The brand name that you've added should automatically appear in the suggestions. As for the color, this one is black. And finally, the size, well, maybe let's say I have all the sizes right now. Okay, once you're done, don't forget to click on save attributes and then hit the update button on the top right. And that's it. Now this product has a clear brand color and sign assigned to it, by which the filter will be able to place it in the right category for you. Just do the same to all of your other products. And now let's come back to the filters. All right, so if you have all of your product attributes set up, you'll be able to easily select to filter them by color, size, brand, or any other option that you've added like an attribute. The rest works exactly the same. So I'll just fast forward to after I've added a few more filters. Now going forward, after you have all the filter options, you can move them around in any order you want. And if everything looks fine, just go ahead and click on that publish button. And this is not the end just yet because we still need to place these filter options nicely on the store. So for that, go to the sidebar and choose appearance and then widgets. On the list, look for the WooCommerce sidebar. Here it is, right over here. Yeah, and select it and just click on the plus sign to add a new bar. Then type filter everything into the search bar and you'll see some options. We need this one right here. Filter everything filters. I've been saying filter a lot today, but it's fine. Okay, now at the bottom, you may add the title like product filter options or something like that and click on update. All right, now let's finally step out of the dashboard and go to your website to see how it all looks. And here they are. Let's take a look.
Now, here are your store's filter options. First, and most importantly, let's see if it works. So, let's say I want to look only at the dresses. Lower the price range and use the color, let's say, red. It works! Great, perfect. As you can see, it shows only the filtered products. This way, customers will find what they need much quicker, be more pleased, and maybe even buy more stuff because of it. Who knows? And please note that you can also customize this sidebar by clicking on the Customize button at the top. Here, you can choose the page's layout, move the sidebar to the left or right, and control its width. Now, at the very bottom, you can find these little icons. These are the mobile and tablet displays. If you want to change how the filter widgets look on the mobile version, you'll need to install a plugin like Widget Options, which allows you to control widget visibility on different devices. After installing and activating the plugin, go to Appearance, then Widgets, and select the WooCommerce filter widget. Here, you can click on the mobile icon and hide it for mobile users if you want to. And by the way, remember the settings I showed you at the beginning? Well, it's time to revisit them. So just go to the filters and then settings. Enable Ajax and then save the settings. This allows content to update automatically without reloading the entire page. I don't know if you've noticed, but without Ajax, the page reloads fully every time you click on the new filter selection. So it can get quite slow and we definitely don't want slow. So, as you can see, if I click on the filter, it doesn't reload the whole page now and it makes my life a lot, a lot easier. So, there are many more options to explore with this Filter Everything plugin, and I've shown you just the basics of it, so make sure to spend some time trying out all the possibilities so you can enhance the user experience as much as possible. But do you know what else you could do to improve your user experience? A well-constructed checkout page. So for the next step in your WooCommerce journey, I suggest you take a look at how to customize your checkout page to make it more clear and convenient. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video.